Thousands of sexual assault test kits left sitting on shelves, untouched, untested, and no justice for the victims. Back in 2019, Arkansas took steps to change that, passing a new law to prevent this from happening. But has it actually helped provide answers and closure for survivors? It's actually a problem we've been investigating for a decade here at THV 11. So I went to the state crime lab to see how much progress they've made. It's not where we need to be. For Crime Lab Director Kermit Channel, this is all more than just numbers. In 2019, when a new law passed to prevent a backlog, Channel tells us there were 461 untested kits. Now, three years later, I walked in evidence room of the state crime lab with him where 567 kits are still waiting. The problem's gotten worse. So what's preventing the crime lab from getting caught up? I think we're always seeing an uptick on the number of sexual assault cases that are coming into the laboratory. His department consistently receiving more than 800 new sexual assault test kits each year over the past three years, something that makes it difficult to focus on those kits still untested. It's something that Channel says pains him each day. I can't imagine, but the last thing that I would want is a victim or survivor of sexual assault to have a kit taken and then that kit doesn't go anywhere or she's ignored or not believed. Josie Graves is a survivor of sexual assault. She says she was raped at the age of four, 14, during undergrad and during law school. All of them happening here in Arkansas. As a survivor, it gives you the feeling that what happened to you isn't being prioritized and that as a person your safety and your you know, traumatic experiences aren't being prioritized. Graves tells us her case is over and that her sexual assault kit has been processed. But as a survivor, she says she's concerned for those still awaiting results. A rape kit is supposed to be for your benefit or to help you in your case it still feels like you're being violated all over again. If you're doing well enough going to work, but still thinking and being anxious over how is this process going to turn out. In 2019, Arkansas passed Act 839, which requires law enforcement to submit a sexual assault test kit for processing within 15 days of receiving it, and then gives the lab 60 days from that to test and complete it. Right now, the crime lab is not reaching that goal. The lab tells us their turnaround right now is not 60 days. It's actually eight months. So I'm not going to be happy with that until we reach the 60 days. I would love to have 30, but 30 is very hard. As a survivor, Graves says a quick turnaround time from the crime lab is essential for their healing. To think that you could be walking around with your assailant on the same streets as you, that's appalling. And then also thinking that that same person could be out, you know, victimizing other women, not just yourself. You're not even the only person. The crime lab knows there's work to be done, but it's not just a rise in new cases that's preventing them from dealing with the backlog. Channel says understaffing is a major contributor to this problem. To address that issue, um, the governor has given us six or actually five new DNA positions that we're currently trying to fill. We've filled some, um, but we're not getting a whole lot of applicants. One reason, it's not easy to become a DNA forensic scientist. Another reason, the starting salary is around $47,000. Federal requirements also include extensive training, which can take up to a year to complete before a new hire can ever touch a case. We're not fully staffed at all. We don't have them. I have six people right now in training. Um, so I'm still trying to fill some other positions. When we have those all on board, I think we'll be about right where we need to be. Until then, hundreds of survivors could be left waiting for answers and the closure that can bring. It's harder to work on yourself if you don't feel like other people think that your healing is just as important as well. Now the crime lab is now looking into providing other incentives to attract qualified candidates and Craig this obviously was such a sensitive story and thank you so much Josie for yeah. sharing your story with us yeah. but it I mean this is just a, a very difficult process for survivors to kind of go through. So. Impossible to watch and not get frustrated. Yeah. It would seem the solutions would be so obvious yeah. and yet it provides or produces so much anxiety in yeah. so many people but you get the feeling the solutions are just right out there. Yeah, and it, I mean, there's so many reasons for that backlog. I mean, we touched on it, understaffing, 
uh, turnover, you know, salary. And so the crime lab is working to, you know, make some of those changes. But again, you know, it's just incredibly difficult for those survivors to even get to that point. And we're just so incredibly happy that they shared this story with well, us. Well, what could facilitate change? And we've talked about this. Faith's going to stay on this story. For sure. This is one that needs to be watched.